Hi, this is Jane Jensen, and I'm going to be giving you a tour today of our new new game, Gabriel Knight, Sins of the Fathers, 20th Anniversary Edition, which is coming out in just a few days now. So I'm very excited about that. And the game has gorgeous art. Uh, the music sounds incredible. It's all been redone. Uh, there's a, a lot of the same gameplay, which if you're anything like me, is going to really bring back a lot of nostalgia for your first experience with the game and some new surprises too. So I'm gonna show you some of those goodies in a minute. But I just wanna say what a pleasure it was to work on this project for me. Um, you know, a writer never really loses the characters um, from your mind. They're always sort of in the background. And Gabriel in particular, um, you know, I did three games with him and uh, spent a lot of years working on Gabriel Knight games. So he's really a character that has a big piece of my heart and it was, a real pleasure for me to reconnect with him and with Grace and Mosley and the whole world there in New Orleans and to sort of experience it intimately again. So I hope you have a similar feeling to that when you get to play it. So now let's go in and see some of the new game. So Bob showed you what his work environment was like here on the farm. This is, uh, this is what mine is like. Pretty much sit in the kitchen at the table and work. Um, and this is my view every day. So I'm very much inspired by being out in this rural area and, you know, it's a fun thing to be able to work on something fairly high tech like a computer game while living out in the middle of nowhere. So thank God for the internet. So people frequently ask me um, what has changed between the way we develop games now in 2014 and the way that we did this game the first time around in 1993. And Really, it's just completely different because, um, you know, when Bob and I made that game in 1993, we were working in-house at Sierra Online in Oakhurst, California, and we were in two rooms with the team, um, two adjacent rooms with maybe, I don't know, 15 people, and um, we worked together like that every day for a year. So now everything is completely virtual. Um, Robert and I work here from the farm and we're in touch with the team all day, every day um, via the cloud. So I just wanted to show you some of the tools that we use for that. Of course, we use Skype um, to have regular team meetings uh, on a weekly or sometimes even daily basis, depending on what's going on. And then uh, we use Jira to track all of our art issues. So. Let's see, let's search for. So here's the art issue, for example. This was the very second issue in the game, um, was to create the bookshop scene. And you can see it went through a gazillion um, iterations. Here's one of the very first passes that we did. And these are my comments on it. So the artists do um, a rev on the and here's the spec that's attached to it that the designers write up. So we attach the spec, the writers start to do some um, comps on it and they're passed back to, to me for comment and then um, eventually we end up with, oh look I have a, <laughs> an example of gray matter in here. Um, we get to a final, final on it and we can log our comments and so every scene in the game, every piece of the art, art in the game goes through this process. For bugs, we use Redmine and um, everybody on the team can comment on each issue and give a status update and um, set the priority and, and all of that. And then for animations, we use this little WordPress blog where the animators can directly post um, the animations that we're working on and we re review them at least once a week to just make sure that um, they get feedback before it gets too far along so that we have a chance to um, to change it. Now a lot of our animation for Gabriel Knight was mo-capped and um, so the animators have to you know adjust that to the model frames that we have and clean it all up. Oops, looks like there's somebody down here from Mobius. 
So that's just a little bit about our working process in 2014 at Pinkerton Road. So I've been playtesting the game lately in Steam, which is really cool. And um, you can see I've played 57 hours since we started testing the build in Steam. And I've a, achieved the rank of Novice Shot Nigger, so clearly I haven't been testing all of the um, optional paths. So I'm sure that people out there will beat me at that uh, as soon as the game comes out, probably within a few hours. You can see I have a whole lot of save games here. I thought we would, let's go to Lake Poncho Train on day one. So you can see that the artists have put in some really cool um, effects like this moving fog and the branches that move in the wind to give it a lifelike feeling. Down here we have some new features. The journal, uh, the journal is, in the, in the original game, we had a tape recorder and all of the conversations that Gabriel ever had with anybody <clears throat> were recorded in that tape recorder. And the reason we did that was because you often learn critical information that you need to solve the mystery. And we didn't, we wanted people to be able to back reference those conversations. For the remake, we decided that was just an awful lot of information to wade through, so we decided to do this journal instead. And it's written in Gabriel's voice, and there's a lot of just kind of funny little tidbits in here, but it also just summarizes the important things that you learn, and also gives you some tips about what other things to do next. The star is the special edition content. and. Each scene has uh, multiple items of special edition content, sometimes sketches, there's some videos of early storyboards that we did for this game. Um, each scene has the old, the original scene uh, inset over the, the new scene to show the difference in resolution. And there's also audio interviews with myself and a lot of the team members, so there's a lot of good stuff in here. And finally, we also added a hint system, um, and this was originally going to be just in a sort of a, a, a bonus or an extra version of the product, but we decided to just have one version of the product. So everyone will get these hints. You can use them or not. If you do use a hint, you have to wait a certain period of time before you can get the next level so that you can't just click through everything. Now we've also added some brand new content, um, just things that we were able to add in more detail. For example, uh, here at the crime scene, there was a little glint on the sand that you could use with, um, you used your magnifying glass and tweezers to pick it up. And now there's actually a sort of a little puzzle involved with that, that involves um, following this snake pattern. Um, I'm not going to show you the solution to that, but... We've also added some new backgrounds that were not in the original game, and uh, the reason for that was one of my goals with this game was to provide more of a sense of New Orleans and more of a true New Orleans flavor. And then we have this beautiful high resolution that we can work with. Um, so this exterior, for example, just shows off the wrought iron. And because we had that, we actually added in a new puzzle that occurs um, out here on this screen. Hey Grace, here I am. Oh. Sorry, I clicked away. 
Let's take a look at Grace here. Got a minute, Grace? What's up? Another change that we made was that uh, topics that you must ask somebody to progress in the game are highlighted in yellow. And, and the reason we did this was because, you know, Gabriel can ask anybody about anything and you can end up having 20, 30 topics with a character. And a lot of times they don't really yield anything that interesting. So we left all that dialogue in there for the hardcore fans, but we provided uh, a way to wade through it a little bit for people who, um, just want to play the, Could the you core do some game. Research for me? Sure, what? Could you see what you can find out about a woman named Malia Getty? Mm -mm. The name Getty sounds familiar. What's your interest in her? Oh, just, you know, stuff about the voodoo murders. If you can get an address. Mm hmm. The murders, right. I'll see what I can find out. Anything else? I can't think of anything. In other places, we added um, some detail insets just for the fun of it. Like in the original game, if you looked at the books, uh, you just got text messages, but now you can actually kind of get an inset of, of what those books are. And let's take a look at the snake book. Show you one more little bit of new content. Oops. Gabriel Hughes, Define Sound of Breaking Glass. Damn, you'd think there'd be a light. Pretty cool with all this resolution that we can actually read things like the drawers in the tomb as, as opposed to having it all be text messages. This is another new little puzzle that we added here just because we could. I think I know what happened to the men in the family now. And I'm not going to show you huh. the solution to this. Some of these look loose. But basically we tried to add um, something brand new into each day of the 10 days. So that's it for today's mini tour of our new game and it's coming out October 15th, 2014. So I hope you enjoy it as much as I do and please feel free to drop by my Facebook page or Twitter and let me know what you thought of it. You can find those addresses on PinkertonRoad.com. Have a great fall.